Is this a rogue court? This is not a normal court. Should there be term limits for the justices, sir? President Biden screaming at the sky over another Supreme Court ruling that didn't go his way. The top court dealing a blow to affirmative action after outlawing the use of race in college admissions. That means merit matters again, and the media is going to need a feigning couch. The worst thing about affirmative action is that it created a Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas, you know, he has criticized affirmative action, and we know that's one of the reasons why he's on the Supreme Court. I think uh, that this is tantamount to sticking a dagger in our back. We will begin to see a kind of segregated uh, uh, higher education landscape. We're going to see that segregation become wider and wider. What's next? Gay marriage? Is this leading to no women in colleges soon? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no women in colleges. We can dream. I joke. <laughs> And Biden wasn't done sobbing, running over to the safe space of MSNBC. Did you know you can make a full-time income without having to work more than five hours a week just by posting videos on YouTube that other people are making for you? One of the last students I shared this with was able to make 60000 within one month. Find it just so out of sorts with the basic value system of the American people. Do you worry that without court reform, this conservative majority is too young and too conservative, that they might do too much harm? Well, I think they may do too much harm. I think that some of the court are beginning to realize their legitimacy is being questioned in ways that hadn't been questioned in the past. He ended that interview the only way he knows how, by awkwardly shuffling off the set before they went to commercial. <laughs> there he goes. Hey, wait a second. Come back. You left something. <sighs> all right, Harold, I go to you for no particular reason at all. We haven't seen you. You were on vacation in Europe, a place called Europe. Must be nice. Uh, the decision seems to me is based on a simple idea. You can't fight racism with more racism. And I think that's what they, we kind of figured out over, over the last, I don't know, three, four, five decades. What say you, Mr. Ford Jr.? So it's good to be back. Thank you so much for um, saying that. Congrats to the two of you on the news. Or at least me. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you, let's face it, Jesse's will be short-lived. <laughs> oh, my God. He's already cursing it. This, this is a great segue to affirmative action. The, the uh, affirmative action, I think, has always been... An, an imperfect tool mm -hmm. to try to redress, hold on, <clears throat> to try to redress racism, the impact of race in <clears throat> the admissions process to promote diversity. Um, today is an interesting day because we, the way we talk about this sometimes, it's almost like we forget <clears throat> that we brought affirmative action because or we introduced affirmative action, the court did, and it was a University of California medical school decision because race was a part of all of this. Now, I don't, I'm not as discouraged as some are. I look at some of the numbers. You have an absolute majority of Americans born after 2012 who are minority kids, who are people, young people of color. 45% of millennials are people of color. Almost 50% of Gen Zers are people of color. In fact, the geography and the demographics and racial composition of the country has almost surpassed the jurisprudence of the courts. Mm -hmm. Now, what I was most encouraged by, and I hope that those who are very critical of this decision, and I'm sorry, it's something in my throat, I ate potato chips before coming on. <laughs> <clears throat> For those who are discouraged, read the entire opinion. Yeah. If you read what Roberts said, he said that uh, um, an app universities can still consider an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination or inspiration. Uh, family income, uh, zip codes, all of these things will continue to be a part of how we look at this. Race alone may not be the way we should look at this going forward. Income, how you were raised, where you were raised, the kind of experiences you had. I still hope universities are able to and colleges are able to do that because I do think one thing that those who are being very critical of this decision are right about, if we don't find ways to continue to promote diversity and expand opportunity, you're going to see fewer doctors, fewer lawyers, fewer television producers, fewer authors, fewer professionals who might be African-American or Hispanic. And that's what I hope we try to achieve. And I, again, I, the politics will be the politics, and people can say what they want to say about the court and I have my own feelings about it. 
Um, but, I, but I hope today is just a new beginning, and I hope that we try to reimagine and be more creative about how we promote diversity and how we try to advance opportunity for every American. You know, Dana, yes, Harold sure. Ford Jr. makes some good points that uh, times change. And uh, I think that if you're a minority who gets a good education and, and, and stays out of trouble just like anybody else, they actually have more opportunities than they've ever had before. And to deny that right. is to deny your own achievements. And, and I, I saw this dissenting opinion where Justice Brown Jackson said that the elephant in the room is race-linked disparities. And they impede achievement. And it's like, at a certain point, that almost sounds racist. <laughs> I love, uh, so I like reading John Roberts' opinion and then reading both Clarence Thomas and Katanji Brown-Jackson because mm -hmm. there you have two African-American people who are on the court and they have strong disagreements about this. T Thomas writes, racialism simply can't be undone by different mm -hmm. or more racialism. We, we haven't mentioned yet, it was Asian-American students who brought this case. Yeah. Because they felt they were being discriminated against. They weren't asking for specific numbers to be allowed in. They were asking for fairness. When a lot of things, well, so many things have changed. Sandra Day O'Connor in 2003, when she was a justice, she said, in 25 years, I imagine this is probably not going to be necessary anymore. Well, where are we now? It's 2023. And in 2005, when I was a spokesperson for Justice Roberts, in, in his confirmation hearings, this issue came up. And he has been working on this for a long time. And it took this case by these Asian American students to work its way up to a majority conservative court in order to get to this result. Yeah, I wonder if people who are critical of this decision can think about the principle that they're against. Mm -hmm. What is the constitutional principle you are against here? That's what the Supreme Court is supposed to do. Now, a lot of the schools have already figured out, and they're documenting it on TikTok and other places, about how they're going to circumvent what they've expected in this ruling. So there will probably be questions about that. The last thing I would say about opportunity for people going to colleges, the best thing that we could possibly do is improve K through 12 education. Amen. Yeah. Because then you will actually be able to have people who are reading, writing and doing math and science and history at grade level. And then maybe you'll choose not to go to college because there's lots of different opportunities. It, college is not the savior. No, it's, it's what happens before. I would love to see some kids in, in maybe in poverty, impoverished situations, someone take up their case bring a class action lawsuit like this one about K through 12 education mm -hmm. so that we can improve that so that everybody has a more equal chance to go to college. Excellent point. You know, Jesse, according to 23andMe, I think you were under 1% yep. African-American. Mm -hmm. And we assume that's why you got the APM gig and I didn't. <laughs> oh um, and yet you see this as a positive Supreme Court decision while you have exploited the benefits of it. Explain your hypocrisy. Well... <laughs> Minorities like me should acknowledge, and I'm just kidding, but I do think we should acknowledge that a lot of minorities in this country are heartbroken mm -hmm. by this case. And they would acknowledge that they have achieved success through affirmative action mm -hmm. and that they wouldn't have had opportunities had affirmative action not have been there. They will acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. So the fact that that's going away is a big blow to them. So I think we should acknowledge that. But what we should acknowledge is if this goes away, all the court is saying is that this is a legal matter that's constitutional. If, if society wants to change the academic success of African-Americans, if African-Americans want to boost their academic success through certain emphasis on certain things, there's no one stopping that. Right. And there's no one stopping white Americans, Hispanic Americans, all Americans for improving their own lives. It's just that the court has said, this is not our job. We will not endorse discrimination. It's against the 14th Amendment. You can't fight discrimination with discrimination. And Clarence Thomas said, race does not determine your value. He said it does not determine success. There are so many other things that go into success. And people have to realize where we are in life is the result of all the decisions we've made. Some of us start on third base. There are certain white Americans who are getting into these elite universities because their fathers went Legacy. There. Legacy admissions, athletic scholarships. There are people that do achieve that. But when you argue that legacy should go away, too, if affirmative action goes away, why not legacy? It depends if Jesse's going to Trinity. <laughs>
I knew he was going to say that. But you should look at class. But, but you should look at class. I agree. Because it's more socioeconomic than anything. There's so many poor white Americans that are denied opportunities, just as the way black Americans are, because they just doesn't, they don't have the income. They don't have the access to, to elite schools in order to spring from a private boarding school into Harvard. And you have to accept that, but the Supreme Court is not getting involved in it. it but going back, it starts before that. I think that's why this is almost... It starts in the home. Yeah, it starts, but it starts in grade school. Um, judge Nancy Pelosi said this is why we need term limits, and this is from a person who won't leave Congress <laughs> unless she's in a hearse. Yeah, and uh, who doesn't want uh, Feinstein to leave either. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, uh, this decision will be the Dobbs decision of 2023. The Democrats are going to use this the way they use Dobbs in 2022. It's very simple. Affirmative action admission policies violate the Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution, the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was drafted in the wake of the Civil War uh, when Congress said no one should be denied the equal protection of the law. So if you follow the genesis of where this started, and then you go to Plessy, and then you go to Brown versus Board of Education, and those famous Supreme Court cases, the court has consistently tried to make it a level playing field. So the color does not add or take away from the ability to get a good education. And as Sandra Day O'Connor said, you know, she assumed at some point it was going to go away. When is it time for this to go away? It's time for this to go away when we live in a society now that is so focused on not just equal opportunity, but equal uh, uh, results. And I think that this decision um, is in itself racist because it says that blacks need a hand up. It says uh, blacks, you know, you are, you're not as bright, so we got to tick that color thing to get you in. What it also says in terms of today's world is that people like uh, Randy Weingarten should really not be promoted the way the woman has been promoted, but she should be, her feet should be held to the fire for what is happening to kids in our schools because of the unions. Kids need to be geared and schooled in a way where they're at least able to read and write when they graduate, and that's not the case. Half of third graders in this country cannot read. They cannot read. So, you know, the focus at this point, given that this is the law, this is the way it's supposed to be. We've got to make sure that el the elementary school, middle school, high schools really focus on making sure kids get a good education, parents have choice. And it's not just the wealthy parents who can afford to move to get to a better school, but all parents should be able to get a school, uh, get their children in school where they can achieve the results that will get them into these colleges. And finally, my final point is, I don't want someone who got into law school or medical school because of the color of their skin. I don't want someone who's flying a plane because of the color of their skin. I want the best person to operate on me, the best person to represent me, and the best person to fly me wherever the hell I'm going. I'm done with affirmative action. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. When there's nothing holding you back, what would your thing be?